Dr. Roth from Pennsylvania, Northeast Pennsylvania. Um, and I've been involved with uh, premium lenses or multifocal lenses actually since we started really doing them in 2004 when we had, uh, I guess that was back in the day when we had concentric rings who really became part of surgery at that time. So, you know, it's been 20 years now that we've been dealing with premium or multifocal lenses for a full range of vision. We do a lot of research in our practice for different companies. And in 2016, I was lucky enough to be involved with LensTex and be involved in the first trials FDA is for approval. And it was a different thought process at that point. This company shows up, and to this point, we've only had concentric ring multifocals. You know, we're looking at rings and rings, and all of a sudden, we have a company coming in that shows us this segmented technology. So the top being for distance and the bottom being for near. So we were a little surprised, and we did the FDA trial, and we were even more surprised of how successful the lens worked and how happy our patients were, both not only with great distance vision, but they had up close vision and they actually had a depth to it. They could move their hand back and forth, which up until that we hadn't really experienced. You know, it was set here or there, but we also felt in the trial that we were getting a depth of near vision. I'm a cataract refractive surgeon. So as new technology comes out, and fortunate enough to be involved in the initial trials for this, and now seeing patients out seven years and they come back and they're still very happy and their vision's very stable and they're really happy. And their nighttime issues seem to be less than we had traditionally with glare, holo, and starburst. So it's been a big part of my practice. Um, in fact, it, the limitation of the lens is that we only have it from 15 diopter to 30 diopter and we can't treat high astigmatism with that. So there is a little limitation. But for those patients who fit into the parameters, this is my preferred multifocal lens. Uh, and I haven't had any rotational issues, you know, where we're trying to rotate the lens onto a certain axis. I have not experienced where it rotated, so you'll find very good stability once it's in the bag. This is really a patient who wants to have minimal need of glasses afterwards and really wants that lifestyle of not having to wear a pair of readers on their head and then look down. And more and more patients are coming and requesting it. And to meet those goals, as I said, uh, for me, the clear view, when that patient falls into the parameters that lens can address, that's my preferred lens. When we have patients come in in their late 40s, uh, they're not a great laser vision candidate, right? Because what we do for them is not gonna really last that long. So refractive lens exchange is a area where I use the SBL clear view all the time. Um, and people are very happy with it. If they're a good candidate, so they need to fall into the range of where the lens is, um, you know, their astigmatism as we talked with the rule up to a doctor and a quarter against the rule. We want to make sure it's probably 0.75 or less. Um, but patients are very happy and it is a lens that I use all the time, refractive lens exchange. Most of us do a cataract wound incision of about 2.4. So when you go into this surgeon, uh, you can sometimes struggle putting the lens through that smaller incision. So I find just increasing maybe to 2.75 is excellent. I typically don't do that during the surgery because I want to have a more consistent anterior chamber. So I will widen the incision just before it inserts the lens. Um, and the lens is very easy to insert. It goes in, it's very malleable, so you can get it uh, slide in, it's easy to put into the bag. And you know, I've even had a situation where you're injecting and maybe my scrub tech oriented the lens a little different than it should be and you're able to manipulate it and get it into the right orientation very easy. As we start using this technology, a segmented uh, bifocal, that we can orientate in different ways. Typically, when we first started out, we always uh, orientated the lens obliquely, okay? And now, as we're starting to get more and more experience with this, we have that we can use the Purkinje's at the microscope. And by focusing on what we feel is a distance per Kinji, and we can actually orientate the lens with that, we feel we're going to even get better distance. So again, it's a technology and learning little nuances of it as we become more familiar with it to even have better results. I think it's an excellent part of your platform that you should have because it gives you more options for the patients. 
And I think you'll be wonderfully surprised after doing a couple of them, how first of all easy it is to work with the lens, uh, how customizable having quarter adapter increments when you're picking the lens for a patient. And I think once they have a fan handful of patients, they'll be very excited about their outcomes.